Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Yan Wang. I'm a data scientist on Uber East Data Science Team. Before we start the talk, okay, a little bit about myself. Um, I was born and raised in China and did my undergrad university there and to the U.S. in the year 2012. Spent four years at Princeton and got my PhD in statistics. And then after graduation, I followed my passion for data and modeling and joined Uber East as a data scientist. And I've been on the team for uh, slightly more than two years now and been mainly focused focusing on Uber Eats restaurant ranking recommendation. So today I'll be basically talking about our past and existing efforts in this area. All right, so let's get started. So the mission for Uber Eats is make eating well effortless for any time, at any time for anyone. Okay, so today I'll basically be talking about how our ranking and recommendation algorithm can achieve this mission from many aspects, and in particular, how do we make eating well more effortless. And as a fun fact, in case you don't know, the number of decisions that an adult person makes in an average single day is 35,000. This is pretty intimidating, huh? And I believe that a lot of the, those decisions may actually come from this question that you'll probably ask yourself every single day, sorry, which is where to eat. Okay, so here is a word cloud generated by some of the restaurants available on Uber Eats platform in San Francisco. So imagine your Uber Eats app looks like this. Will this help you to determine where to eat for dinner tonight? Probably not, right? So this is basically where ranking and recommendation come into play, where we want to basically present to you the most relevant restaurants at the right time and with the right context. And you may still have to make your 35,000 decisions every single day, but with ranking and recommendation, we hope to make some of them slightly easier for you. So if you think about the problem of ranking and recommendation, it's actually not a new problem and it has been an integral part of our daily lives. So, um, so you may be wondering with so many well-established ranking and recommendation algorithms out there, can we just go ahead and apply the state of our technologies for our use case? The answer is no, unfortunately. And the reason is we're actually facing a slightly more complex problem here in the sense that we're unique. Okay, and why we're unique? Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, why we're unique? Uh, so if you think about Uber, the rider app, we're actually moving riders and drivers around in a two-sided marketplace, right? So with Uber Ease, we actually have one more player in the marketplace, which is our restaurant partners, okay? And we want to keep all three sides uh, of the marketplace happy because they are either our customers, like our eaters, or they're our partners, like our restaurant partners or our delivery partners. Okay, and this is actually an extremely difficult optimization problem because different sites, they may care about different objectives. For example, on the eater side, we care about their conversion rate, their retention. On the restaurant side, we care about are we building a fair marketplace for them? On the courier side, we care about are we ensuring supply reliability? Can each courier have enough jobs of the day? Okay, and basically in the next, I'll show how ranking can basically address different objectives altogether and make sure that everyone in the marketplace is happy with that. Okay, so before, sorry, before we dive into the technical uh, details, let's first look at the problem space that we're dealing with here. Okay, so quick pull here. Uh, how many of you have ordered from Uber Eats before? Raise your hand. Oh, that's really a lot. Uh, for those who didn't raise your hand, how, have you heard about Uber Eats? How many of you have heard about Uber Eats before? Okay, almost everyone, that, that's great, that's great. So just in case you don't know what the app looks like, here's how it looks like. Okay, so basically when you open it, you'll see a bunch of rows first, which are basically aggregations of restaurants based on some criteria. For example, either topics for Chinese because I order Chinese a lot, or because you order from some particular restaurant or they are new on Uber Eats, et cetera. And then we also, below those rows, we have a vertical list. And if you have something particular in mind, you can just go to the search funnel. Okay, so ranking and recommendation is actually happening everywhere in the app. And another challenge that we're facing here is that if you look at the problem space, it's actually heterogeneous and hierarchical. In the sense that the items we have to rank is not, could be a store or could be a row of stores. Right, so this basically requires us to develop a ranking framework that can deal with all types of contents in one single model and present the eaters in an optimal like home feed layout. Okay, so this is the outline of my talk today. I'll first talk about our journey of ranking, then I'll talk about our multi-objective optimization work, and in the end, I'll talk about our holistic optimization uh, for the heterogeneous contents. Okay, the journey of ranking. So uh, more than two and a half years ago, when Uber East just started its current version of the business model, we actually 
only have one data scientist on the team. We don't have anyone working on ranking or recommendation. So we're using a very naive time-based ranker. Basically, the faster the food, the higher on top we rank it. And starting in October 16, 2016, half a year later, we began to develop uh, ranking algorithms. Uh, the first one we tried is actually a scoring function based on an overall conversion rate plus some cuisine similarity score. So it's an offline function, but we actually update it on a daily basis. And we see a very significant business metric lift from that. And then one month later, we began to leverage Uber's machine learning platform called Michelangelo and started to use real-time machine learning models to basically score and rank the restaurants according to a single objective, which is the predicted conversion rate. And in case you don't know, conversion rate means like the probability that eater is going to order from an item given that eater sees an item. Okay, the item here being either like a store or a carousel, uh, like a row of stores. Um, and yeah, and starting in uh, February 2017, we realized that ranking actually should uh, serve the whole marketplace, the three-sided marketplace, through solving this multi-objective optimization problem. And we have been working on individual machine learning models for each of the objectives ever since then. And then starting from March this year, we began to look at, into this holistic optimization problem, which deals with heterogeneous and hierarchical contents. Okay, so let's quickly go over the past efforts in single objective ranking. So we're using a real-time machine learning model that predicts for every eater store pair what is the impression level conversion rate. And it's based on a huge pool of personalized features, including eater features, restaurant features, eater restaurant interaction features, and uh, contextual features. And not surprisingly, the most important features are the collaborative filtering features from matrix factorization. Basically, ideas like we believe similar people will like similar food. And we use GPT or XGBoost for the machine learning model. Okay, as I mentioned, it actually didn't take us very long to realize that single objective optimization is not enough for our use case. Because back in the world of single object optimization, we can only optimize for objective on one side. But we do care about other players in the marketplace, right? For example, the other objectives we care about could be restaurant earnings or delivery partner supply reliability. This actually requires ranking to solve the problem of multi-objective optimization in order to serve everyone in the marketplace. And we call this Moo. Okay, so how exactly are we going to do Moo? So basically, if you think about this, there are different objectives from different sides of marketplace. They usually uh, compete with each other and they do not reach optimality at the same time. What does that mean? That means that with multi-objectives to optimize, there naturally comes the trade-off. Right, so for example, here it shows the trade-off between conversion rate on the eater side and market fairness on the restaurant side. So basically, you can imagine if you're simply optimizing for conversion rate, then what you're probably doing is that you're recommending a lot of, say, like a few very popular restaurants to almost all the eaters. And as a result, this is unfair to the new restaurants who just opened or just onboarded to Uber Eats. Right? But on the other hand, if you simply optimize for market fairness by, say, uh, ensuring equal exposure of every restaurant to every single eater, then probably what we'll be doing is that we'll be recommending some of the irrelevant restaurants to the eaters, which will hurt the eater conversion rate. So this is basically what a trade-off curve will look like if you, if you imagine that. Yeah, so basically then how the question becomes, how do we do this trade-off in a mathematically principled way? Well, we use linear and quadratic programming, which basically is doing that. Uh, we are setting the constraint on the amount of sacrifice we're willing to make on some objectives while we optimize for others. Okay, so I'll zoom into two trade-offs that we did in this move framework. The first one is how do we build a fair marketplace? Okay, another pool. Can anyone guess what are the most popular restaurants on Uber Eats? You can just shout it out. McDonald's? Anything else? Hello, guys. Okay, actually, both are good answers. They are both very popular restaurants on our platform. And the example I use here is Hello, guys. So imagine a well-established restaurants as Hello, guys is popular on Uber Eats. And then imagine another restaurant who just either just opened or just onboarded to Uber Eats. How can we make sure that we're creating equal opportunities for both of them? You can imagine that if you fail to do so, then the new rest partner is unhappy, they're, they are not earning enough money, they may turn from us. And as a result, this will also hurt either conversion rate because we have data showing that the more restaurants you have, the higher the conversion rate is. Right, so this will definitely hit, uh, hurt the business in the long run. So what do we do? Actually, this fits very nicely into the framework of explore, exploit trade-off with multi and bandit, if you're familiar with multi and bandit. So basically, we're exploiting the restaurant with high, converted, uh, high predicted conversion rate. And at the same time, we want to explore new and low volume restaurants who are potentially good. Okay, so example here, we do Bayesian modeling. So uh, 
for example, we have two restaurants where restaurant one is a new restaurant and restaurant two is a well-established restaurant, like very popular ones. So if you just look at the point estimate of the conversion rate, you might want to say restaurant two has a higher conversion rate than restaurant one. But does this necessarily mean that restaurant two is always better than restaurant one? Well, not always, because if you look at the posterior variance of the estimate, because we do not have enough data for restaurant one, actually the posterior variance is very big. So there is actually a non negligible chance that restaurant one is actually better than restaurant two. It's just we don't have enough data to back that up yet. Right? So how do we do this? Basically, this motivates us to do this trade-off based on the posterior variance of the estimate. Or in more specifically, we first use a machine learning model, like any black box model of your choice, to estimate the mode of the conversion rate, which are the two vertical lines here. And then we use any off-the-shelf banded algorithm for exploits for a trade-off, like Alpson Greedy, Thompson Sample, or UCB, your choice. And another trade-off that we're making here is the trade-off between relevance and diversity. So um, if you still remember our uh, past work in single objective ranking, we're basically ranking the restaurants according to conversion rate, or how likely the restaurant is going to, the eater is going to order from the restaurant, right? Which means we're ranking according to relevance. So what's wrong with that? So imagine myself as an eater, I really like ramen places, and order only ramen places from Uber Eats in the past. So if my machine learning model is doing a great job, then probably this is what I will see in my recommendation. Well, will this be the most attractive recommendation to me? Probably not, right? What if once in a while I'm willing to do some exploration and try out new restaurants? This actually prevents me from trying out new options, right? So this actually motivates us to think that ranking should solve a multi-objective optimization and it should balance both accuracy and diversity, right? So we developed a personalized diversification algorithm, which takes as input eater representation, we call them taste profile, and restaurant representation, we call them cuisine profile. And then we use a sequential and gradient optimization problem uh, uh, methodology, which basically determines what restaurant to put at each position in a sequential fashion. Okay, and we also see very good results there. Okay, so I talked about two trade-offs that we made in this move framework. We actually made a lot of other trade-offs as well. So with move in place, what's next? I actually haven't talked about how do we deal with this heterogeneous content yet, right? So here is a simplified view of our home feed. We call it home feed. Basically, these are like rows of the restaurants. We call them carousels. And then we have the rest of the stores. So what's happening with our ranking framework is that we first rank the stores within each carousel, and then we rank across them. And then we have a machine learning model determining how many carousels to show in a session. And then we rank the rest of the stores. And then on top of everything, we do a diversification layer. Okay, and what we are currently working on is basically a unified and holistic framework that basically does everything in one model. And this requires us uh, to do some um, like assumptions and also some key components of this framework, including uh, what we call a triplet model. Okay, so if you still remember, in the past, we have been predicting the conversion rate on eater store pair. But now with this new framework, we're actually predicting on triplet level, which is either store source. And the source here meaning that it's either the carousel name, like uh, quickie, like very quick, new on Uber Eats, like uh, or popular near you, or like the stuff from stores. Uh, and and we basically we predict conversion rate on that level. And another assumption that we're making here, which is what also what we observed in our data, is that user has limited patience. Okay, in the sense that they will give up scrolling both horizontally and vertically if they don't find anything interesting in the feed. And basically, we model this user scrolling behavior by introducing what we call a scrolling discounting factor that basically discounts users' uh, probability of continuous scrolling for both within carousel scrolls and across carousel scrolls. Okay, and the output of this holistic framework is basically uh, an optimal home feed layout that is maximizing the session level conversion rate. Uh, yeah, I guess that's the end of my talk today. So to summarize, I talk about the journey of ranking and our multi-objective optimization framework. So if you're interested in the details, we have a blog post uh, talking about the technical details. And I also talk about holistic optimization for heterogeneous content. Well, some other things that, that are very interesting that I don't have time to get to today, one is uh, writer to eaters. Uh, it's basically when we want to use writer history to solve the co-star problems for new eaters. So you can imagine for a new eater, new to Uber Eats, there may be an existing Uber rider, right? And if we have their trip data, can utilize them, then maybe based on the trips they, they've been to, like the restaurants or even not restaurants, we can kind of infer their cuisine, like taste profile or cuisine preference. 
right? So we have seen very good promising like initial results from there. And JR who's sitting over there on our team is currently working on this. And another problem uh, dish is on dish recommendation, okay? So basically, if you think about the number of dishes we have, it's at least one or two orders of magnitude larger than the number of restaurants we have, right? So this actually means we have far more potential in this ranking recommendation world where we can just do dish level recommendation. Okay, so that's the end of my talk.